do you think that room is going to be deeper, um, versatile, and able to withstand an injury or two this year? Well, I think naturally we're going to be deeper because we're going to have more bodies in the room than we did last year. And yeah, I think there's guys that played a lot of, you know, um, very reasonable snap amount of snaps and uh, it, some meaningful snaps that allowed them to grow with confidence and be able to grow with their technique and the things that they put on tape. So yeah, I think we're going to be a lot deeper in that room. What did, what did you lose with Chez when he went down last year and what do you hope he could give you with him? Well, I think Chez is a very decisive runner. I think he's got a good feel for all of the run schemes that we do as an offense and being able to have him back with that comfortability, it doesn't matter what play gets called, I know that we're going to advance the football. So um, that, that that's kind of what you get with him consistently. What kind of conversations did you have with him if there were any about his desire to come back and also how he can put himself in position to make it through a full season. Those are decisions or those are conversations that were had between him and I. If he wants to answer those, he can answer them, but I'm gonna keep those between him and I. We heard a lot about Chad's leadership through the last season and the season and even when he was injured, like how do you see that in your room, especially now when you got younger guys, some guys are maybe past a place of different roles? I think he's done a phenomenal job growing his leadership in the room specifically. Um, he's like having another coach out there. You know, he'll see something, he'll go up and he'll talk to one of the younger guys and tell him something that he needs to be able to fix to be able to be better on the next rep if it was something that I missed. So, um, you know, he speaks his mind. If there's things that aren't going well in practice, he'll say that. He'll speak up and talk to the guys in the room, and um, it's very helpful. Did you know about Walker before he came up? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, just through the recruiting process of recruiting him out of the transfer portal. Um, you know, he's a very good kid, comes from a really good family. His family came up on the official visit, and, um, you know, he's very humble, and uh, he's very hungry also. So it's a good combination. In terms of a player, though, you know, I, I never got to sell Plato Palma, but what have you seen from him so far this spring? I, I know it's early, but he looks like he's pretty comfortable. Plays with a lot of physicality. He's very physical back. He makes very good decisions with the ball in his hands, and he finishes all of his runs consistently. What about a receiver? You say yeah, he can catch the ball well, too. Yep. Down when the dust settles in the fall, how many guys do you want to right now? What's what's an ideal number to have? You say, hey, I, I want this X amount number. I think, truthfully, that's up to the room. I think it's up to their ability to be able to learn and be able to perform out on the field when we have our scrimmages and when we go in fall camp and being able to show their information, retention, and being able to put good things on tape. You have two freshmen coming in this summer just in the recruiting process. What did you like about Darian and Dylan? I mean, what do you think they can add to this for the both of them are very talented. I think Darian's versatility is what separates him from other running backs. And I think Dylan's decisiveness reminds me a lot of Chez. I think that's what separates him from the other running backs. I'm very excited to really get my hands on those guys. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting them here. The excitement too, I mean, just this is a developmental process and everything. But, you know, what what excites you the most about the promise of this ring brings uh, the depth coming fall? I just think there's a lot of different styles of runners in the room. And I think that that gives you natural depth and comfortability of going into a season knowing, you know, what type of runner that each of them are to be able to package that and be able to come up with your game plan specifically to those types of guys. But you've got a lot of guys who are maybe, you know, more of a change of face type of guy. And then you also have those bruisers, you know, those physical running backs. What kind of, when you see those guys, what's like the compliment like? And what do you guys kind of like about having both types of running backs in your team? I think you answered it. You have guys that are slasher, you got guys that are bruisers. To be able to have both of those guys is a blessing. And uh, truthfully, I think it helps your offense um, through momentum and, you know, situationally as well. With some of them, like, talk about Darion and Dylan, but. Gideon came in early, just how is he kind of being a true freshman, pick off the offense through six practices, and how did you see him progress early on too? Gideon's super smart. He's done a really good job of being able to take the information that we're teaching and putting it on tape, and um, he plays with a lot of physicality. He never goes down without a fight, and uh, his contact balance is very, very good. Um, I'm really excited about him as well. What did the bowl game just tell you about Cade and Jackson as that's kind of in a tough spot being behind two senior running backs and then all those young running backs that you recruited? Yeah, like I said, I mean, they had they had some meaningful snaps before that as well. You know, Jackson started playing earlier than Cade did and being able to have both of those guys get those meaningful snaps against, you know, really good opponents and really good talent just gives them the opportunity to grow their confidence and feel more comfortable when they play in the game. So. Um, I thought they both did an excellent job in bowl prep and in the bowl game, and I'm excited watching them go and compete out here as well.
Coach, uh, first year evals for yourself. You know, what did you what did you like about the first year? What do you where did you see some uh, places for improvement? I think I just got to continue to try to grow everybody in the room. I got to coach everybody with the same consistency, and we got to be able to have a lot more depth to feel comfortable putting guys in the game. Coach, with the freshmen coming in, you guys have eight bodies that on scholarship. Is this the most you've kind of had ever in a room? And what is what are maybe some of the positives and maybe even some of the negatives when you have so many guys that are that talented? Yeah, it's the most that I've had, and obviously the negative is you got one football, right? So you got to find opportunities and times to be able to grow everybody and give them equal amount of reps. Um, but the advantage is obvious. You just have more bodies. And again, I think the guys that we have in our room are very, very talented. Is there anything with Tyree that you've seen on the field that you didn't expect, you know, from watching his film that he's putting on film right now in the spring? Like I said, I mean, I just think he's very decisive, and I think he's very, very physical. Seems like Cade's kind of cleaned up some of the fumbling issues that maybe he had uh, over the last year. Is that a big focus for him this offseason? That's a big focus for our entire offense. We have to be better at ball security, especially in our room. You mentioned before it's up to the room to decide how many guys you want to play. But in a best-case scenario, do you want two guys to, to share the load? I mean, is that more realistic than having – Chess handle eighty percent of the carries. Like, what what do you think makes the most sense based on the room that you have? Like I said before, it's up to the room. You know what I mean, it depends on how we how we do here, how we do in fall camp, and who's ready to play. If you're ready to play, you're gonna be on the field. So, what do you think this group just misses the most? Um, when you lose a player like Braylon in terms of pennies that you know you're just not gonna be able to replicate them. How many buys you're able to throw out there? Um, obviously, the size and the in-game experience. Obviously, you know. Chez and Tao, we have a lot of in-game experience, but Braylon probably had the most when we had him, and um, mm. he, he did a phenomenal job of understanding what he was getting across from him, and I think our guys are progressing and being able to do that as well right now. With, with Braylon, you know, being the bell Kyle at times last year after Chez's injury, we obviously saw him handle a lot of the load. What are some of the benefits maybe for you when you have a guy who can be able to handle the load, but also maybe working in a rotation where everyone kind of saying fudge? What's kind of like the, the downside for both Sunday or upside? I think the upside, again, is just having more bodies. You know what I mean? When guys go in the game, they are going to be more fresh, and you're going to be able to play more people, and more people are going to be able to get opportunities to be able to give your offense the best chance to be able to reach its full potential. How was Nate White improved from last year? I'm sorry? How was Nate White improved from last year? Nate White's done a phenomenal job. First and foremost, he's put on the weight that we've asked him to put on, and he's grown mentally. Um, you can you can see how the confidence that he's displaying while running the football. He's playing with more physicality, and you know his, his ability to use his elusiveness is second to none, in my opinion. How hard is it for someone like me, where you have experience, four guys that have game experience, and I think you travel. I think I know for sure. I think it was Minnesota, Minnesota game last year. But just how hard is it for someone like a redshirt freshman to try to find reps with maybe you know high, maybe first team reps? When you have so much experience ahead of them, that's the game of football, right? You got to continue to work, you got to continue to grow, and you got to stick with it, and you got to find ways to be able to shine when you're given the opportunities. What's it been like working with AJ Glazik, the new offensive line coach, in tandem with your guys, as well as a veteran offensive line group that's going to stick around? I love Coach Glazik. He's coming in here. He's done a phenomenal job. He's got a lot of juice. He's got a lot of energy. He brings a lot of experience and knowledge, and you can see the improvements already. We're talking about that offensive line group. Where have you maybe seen improvements, especially in the run blocking area, uh, like through the first few practices of the spring? And what are you maybe looking for in that group as you're grouping there, of course, with Kobe? Yeah, like I said, I mean, I think they've improved tremendously in all areas since Coach Boz has been here. And I'm just looking forward to be able to run behind them, boys. When it comes, when it comes just to recruiting wise, just does the approach change in terms of what type of running back you're looking for, like after signing the, a free running back class and just finding compliments or finding who can, you know, what do you have in the room compared to what you want in the room down the road? We want to go out for the best players.